Hey everyone, my name is Erica from Erica the Celebrant. Um, I am a Melbourne based marriage celebrant and I've been asked to do a question and answer for Polka Dot Bride. I'm super excited to do it. Um, so I've been a celebrant for about two and a half years now. I absolutely love it. Um, it's not my full-time job. I am also a nurse working in a busy hospital in Melbourne, but uh, I started this thinking um, I might just do a few a year and my business is growing exponentially. So I am so, so happy. And I am so excited to be, yeah, part of this today and chatting all things weddings. Okay, so we're going to get straight into the questions now. So first question, how far in advance do I need to book my celebrant? So I always say that um, as soon as you've got your venue booked, as soon as you've got your date locked in, you should start ticking off some of your main vendors. So your celebrant and your photographer should probably be the two things that you get sorted straight away because we can book out years in advance. So it's good to get those two things sorted and number one thing you can't get married without a celebrant so pretty important thing a lot of people think it's kind of one of the last things that you need to worry about but it's pretty much one of the most important um, roles in your wedding day because if your wedding ceremony isn't great it's gonna put the vibe off for the day so yeah make sure you get yourself sorted with your marriage celebrant Obviously, if your celebrant's not available, they will probably put you in touch with a few other celebrants, but hey, if you realize that you're only getting married with a couple of months in advance, still reach out to who you want. And yeah, sometimes we're free. And sometimes this is the day that we haven't been able to book. So please, please, please get in touch. Second question. How do I find a celebrant who gets us? So I think for me, especially um, when I'm meeting my couples and chatting with my inquiries, the number one thing that will help you feel at ease and feel like you know that the celebrant is a good fit for you and also that the couple is a good fit for the celebrant is meeting face to face. Obviously, if you live far away, that might not be a possibility. But I always think that meeting face to face for a coffee or a wine, which is what I usually do with my couples, it's a good icebreaker. It's a great way of finding out what everyone wants out of it. And um, yeah, just chatting the nitty gritty of the wedding day. And yeah, just making sure that you're all going to make a great fit before you um, book in. Okay, so this is a good one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Favorite readings for a light-hearted wedding. So readings is one of those things that you will find readings everywhere. If you type wedding readings into Google, you will get thousands and thousands and thousands of wedding readings. And what I think is a great wedding reading, you might not think is a great wedding reading. So I will always give my couples when they book one of these, Erica the Celebrant, information packs now that has about 20 or so readings in it that you can choose from i've got some romantic ones i've got some light-hearted ones i've got um some pretty simple ones and sort of something to suit everyone i think one of my favorite readings that i have which isn't actually one that many people would use or know is i'd rather rise in love with you by yana lynn Mipik. It's a good one. It's not super sappy. It's just a real lovely story. Um, there's also things like Dr. Seuss readings and quotes and songs. They always make really great readings as well. Um, and also can be really funny as well. So yeah, just get searching. And if you really like something, chances are it's going to make a really great reading. So yeah, just chat to your celebrant about it. next question what are the legal parts of the ceremony that need to be said so what we need to do when we write the ceremony is 
we need to include your full names at least once. I usually just do these in the vowels because I think it's a nice time to do them. Um, I introduce myself as an authorised married celebrant or your celebrant does that. And then you have something called the monotone, which is the I'm duly authorised by law to solemnise marriage according to law, yada, yada, yada. I won't say it all. It's more about the importance of marriage in Australia um, between two individuals. So that needs to be said. And then there's something called the legal vows. So that will be the I, so-and-so, take you, so-and-so, to be my lawful wedded husband, wife, partner, spouse, partner in marriage. Now, I want to make it really, really clear that it doesn't always have to be bride and groom um, or husband and wife. We can change those things. My business is very friendly to everyone. My motto is I believe that everyone should deserve the mar to marry the one they cannot live without. So I want people to know that they're all welcome um, at my site with me and I will accept everyone with open arms. Uh, I think that gone are the days that we just use husband and wife. There are a lot of couples that don't want to be husband and wife, they want to be partners in marriage or partners for life and that is fine. Uh, once we've done the legal vows, it's a really lovely time to do some personal vows, which is you can say a few thing, lovely things about each other. It's really nice to keep those secret. And then there is just some marriage paperwork to sign at the end with your two witnesses. And that is it. Now, I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely love this question. Can we walk down the aisle together? Yes, you can, and I love it. Every time a couple says they want to do this, um, I always jump with the idea because I think it is really great. It's very modern, and it doesn't always have to be about one person walking down the aisle, whether it be the bride or the groom or the partner or anyone. Anyone can walk down the aisle. I've um, had one wedding that we were meant to do it um, and it's now we've now postponed but the couple were going to walk down into a garden together and just meet all their guests and we we're just gonna start their beautiful simple ceremony and yeah there was no expectation of the of um, my beautiful bride walking down the aisle um, they just wanted to start together because they were starting their life together Any ideas for readings for grandparents? So, like I said before, Google is going to be your best, best bet for finding all things readings. Um, your little celebrant books that most of your celebrants will have will have lots of lovely um, readings. One that I find that parents love and grandparents love is Oh, The Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. It's a bit of a fun one. Um, it's not too formal and it's a bit adventurous um, there's also things like wedding verse or the art of marriage they're very common and then there's also E.A. E. Cummins reading which is quite a lovely um, beautiful old um, reading it's called I carry your heart I carry it in mine um, I think that's exactly how it is and it's a very nice one um, that just sort of sort of symbolizes that wherever your heart goes, I'll go with you. So um, that's a really nice one. Um, also just saying a few words is nice or saying a little quote. I've got lots of quotes in my book as well. So a lot of the time grandparents and family members, they don't want to say a lot. So just doing something like that's very simple, very lovely and very meaningful to the couple. This is another really good one. I want my friend to marry us, but I don't know if it's legal. Can I hire a celebrant just to do the legal parts? Yes, you can. I did a wedding for my beautiful couple, Mike and Morgan, last year. Actually, it was on the Polka Dot um, Bride website. And they had their beautiful friend, Grace, run the ceremony. So basically, Grace just introduced me as the authorised marriage celebrant. She did all the couple story 
um, and she did all the introduction and it was lovely, it was really personal. She knew the couple better than I would know them, so she wrote a lovely, lovely story. And then I just jumped up for the legal parts, so um, the monotone, the legal vows. I did the ring exchange with them as well, and then I signed the certificates with them. And it was so lovely and so meaningful to have Grace do that. So that's a really lovely thing to do if you've always envisioned one of your friends marrying you, but they're not actually a celebrant. So yeah, it's very similar to having them marry you, but then you just have... And um, Marius Lovely hang in there for the leg parts. Okay, we have no idea how to start looking for a celebrant. Are there any tips? Well, um, one thing I would do is you're often, if you're planning a wedding, you might pick up a wedding magazine. Um, they'll always have a directory at the back um, or a directory like polka dot bride will have um a vendor section at the back or a directory with lots and lots of celebrants you can go on you can have a look you can read the bios of all the celebrants um you can see where they're based and then i think one of the best things that we have in this modern day is instagram i think if you even write melbourne celebrant or celebrant into the into the search bar you will just be inundated with celebrants you can have a little peruse you can have a look and see if there's anything that you like any style that you like click on their profile then it'll often go into their website there'll be a, a quick link to the website and you can get a really good idea of what kind of celebrant they might be have a look at their testimonials have a look at their gallery see the weddings they've done um, google reviews is also a really good way of getting an idea about celebrants and just have fun with it and reach out. You don't have to choose the first celebrant that you come across. You might meet one or even talk to them over the phone and say, yep, that's the celebrant for me. And you might meet one or talk to them on the phone and it's not really working and that's fine. It's okay for the celebrant and the couple not to gel. Not everyone gels. So I think, yeah, probably Instagram is your best bet. Um, Facebook as well, but I think Instagram is probably a little bit better. And lucky last question, everyone, is any hot tips or ideas on how to make our ceremony really personal? Okay, so when I sit down with my couples and I plan their weddings, every single ceremony is different. I don't have a template, I write it from scratch. Every single couple that I meet with, they get a questionnaire from me. It's got about 30 questions about each other, what you love about each other, what you hate about each other, or what drives you mad. I want you to fill it in as much as possible, as in as much detail as possible. And with our interactions um, at our meetings, I will get little ideas, little things, little stories, little tips, and I'll add all of this into the ceremony. Um, if you've got a really good couple story, it's a really good basis for your actual wedding ceremony. Um, other things that you can do, get friends involved, um, you can do some rituals. So there's a tree planting ritual, hand fastening ritual, um, there is love letters, there is wine storing. There are so many ways that you can make it all about you. Most wedding ceremony sorry most wedding cere celebrants will write a draft and send it to you before the wedding it's your day you have to be happy with it so you need to be honest if it's not what you think you would like or you want to change things that's okay we don't always know you as well as obviously you know each other so if we get things wrong please tell us and if there's not things that you don't want in your ceremony we take them out we add more things in that's our job to make you happy. We want you to look back on your day 10 years down the track and say that was definitely us. That was so reflective of us as a couple. It's exactly how I wanted it. We would hate if you didn't think that the ceremony suited you or if your friends and family didn't think your ceremony suited you. So be honest with what you want with every one of your vendors. Um, be truthful, um, write lots of new questionnaires, be really open at your meetings and you are going to have the absolute 
best day ever. Okay guys, well that is a wrap for me. I have absolutely loved coming on here and chatting with you all tonight. Uh, and thank you so much for Polkadot uh, Bride to ask me here tonight. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I love everything that they do. They've always supported me um, with my lovely little business and yeah, I'm so happy to be part of their tribe. So uh, guys, so great chatting with you all. I'm so glad that I could answer some of your questions. If you have any more, please send them through to me at um, info at ericathecelebrant.com that's my email or um, at ericathecelebrant is my Instagram or www.ericathecelebrant.com please send me an email um, send me inquiries I am Melbourne based but I travel everywhere and I would love to meet you and going forward with COVID um, things are going to get better weddings are going to happen and they're going to start happening again and guest limits will lift and you will have the best day ever so if you're one of my beautiful couples or one of any of the other couples out there who had to reschedule postpone cancel please know you will have the best day when your time comes and hopefully i can be part of it have a great day night whatever whenever you're watching this it was great chatting bye